Welcome back, everyone. It's nice to see you again. Let's do an audio check before we begin. Is my, uh, my voice okay up against the music? Skylar, welcome back for 21 months, as well as JT for 10 months. Welcome back, and it's nice to see you. Lupa Wolf, welcome on in for two months. It's nice to see you again. Shadow for three. Hello. Let's do something we haven't done in a while, shall we? Well, you guys remember this outfit? <laughs> Welcome back. Hey, Soul, thank you so much for the wonderful and beautiful raid. I appreciate it. What song was that? I can't, I can't remember. I have no idea. I don't know. Holy bejeebus. What are we holy bejeebusing at? What? Should I cover up? Am I showing too much? Throwback Tuesdays. Are the eyes different? No, they're just a little bit redder because I couldn't figure out the bloom very well. Also, Koiko, can we get a, a, a shout out for Koiko? I would appreciate that. Nocturne for 24 months. Welcome back, you sweet bean. Booba, ah. Show more blood. Wow. You guys are freaking savage today. You want blood already? Okay. I think my eyes are a little bit too red because I haven't fixed the bloom, but you know. Hi. Ah, rip and tear. <laughs> Welcome. You guys miss me? Hmm. It's good to be back. I miss this outfit. You sound much better than last time I was able to catch the stream. Yeah, I'm still suffering from a bit of like a uh, hardcore cough if I talk too much. And a little bit of nausea, but beyond that, I'm pretty good. They kind of look like bug eyes. I know, they're usually supposed to be glowing. Let me see. Uh, let's see if I can fix it. Make the blood hands do gay. Oh my god. You look a bit different from last night with Mel. Did you do something to your hair? No, we got a little bit wild and crazy last night, and these are the repercussions. <laughs> hey, thank you. It's Wednesday in New Zealand, but every day is hump day for me, mother. <laughs> thank you, Rattle. On fiction time. Damn, it sounds like you guys are... Uh, uh, last night was so much fun. A lot of you guys are commenting about last night. I... Hold on. I'm trying so hard to get them not to fuck. Fuck. No. 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 Good boy. <clears throat> I actually walked away last night feeling a little bit nervous because I don't want to make any of my community uncomfortable but it sounds like you guys really enjoyed it i hope that we approach that in a different way last night also flesh golem welcome back for 19 months 
What was the uh, what was your guys' favorite part of last night? We're very mature and it was nice to hear it. Thank you. Okay, let me see if I can fix the bloom one second. Zero. Let me Oh god. Give me a second, chat. It's kind of supposed to be like that. And then you get these like little flickerings on my on my tubes. So then it's all fucked up. Everything was fun. <laughs> there we go. Maybe if I turn the intensity down. That should be okay. Yeah, see the little flicker on my IVs? It's so annoying. I don't know how to make that stop. Mel's reaction to you asking if she had us to thank for things was really funny. I had no idea. Honestly, also, Baya, welcome back for 10 months. I, I had no idea how, how, how interested she was. I didn't know. When we met in person, it was very, very, very mature and casual. But I guess inside she was dying. I, I didn't know. I had no fucking idea. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I can't help myself. If someone's a little bit like falling head over heels, I like to just kind of rub their nose in it. I'm like a little bit of a I'm a little bit of a flirtatious being because I like watching people squirm, and I I just can't help myself. I was really trying to be appropriate and mature last night. I swear to God, I was. Um, but bro, I, I I I it's like my it's a, I I. I'm going to say it, it's a little bit of my kink. If someone's a little bit nervous or shy or awkward, I just want to like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I just think it's adorable. I can't help myself. It's, it's, it's a, it feels nice. I just want to make them more, more comfortable, but uncomfortable by, you know, I can't help myself. <laughs> but no, I do like Mel and I like Fillion and I think that, I love this music, but this is driving me nuts. Um, I honestly think that between the three of us, we have really great energy. I, I've been, I know that everyone in the VTuber community has their own little like groups and people that they click with really well. And wait, music? What do you mean music? Question mark. I got, what the? Yeah, there was music this whole fucking time. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Is it loud and clear? Um, yeah, I think I a lot of us are all friends with each other, right? We all we're all like peers and friends and supportive of each other. But everyone's got their little groups, right? And I didn't really, I don't know what mine was for the longest time. Like, Peach, Peach Milky's my best friend, but she hasn't streamed in a while, especially on her VTuber model. Um, and I, I don't click really well with like the bow group. I love them a lot, but like, that's not, not any hate towards them at all. Um, it's just even in, in person, I felt, I'm gonna separate. Uh, in person, I felt really out of place. It's, it's like too much for me and I can't keep up with all the put shit in my ass jokes. Um, but they're very sweet on an individual level. But as a group, I, I feel like I just feel like an old hag. Um, but I don't know, like Fillion, I, I, I can't keep up with her jokes, but she's like all of those people in one. But Fillion accepts me and, and never makes me feel bad or stupid for not understanding a joke. Um, and, and she likes me for who I am. And Mel is just an absolute adorable, kind, sweet person. And we all just click really well. So I feel like I've, I've found my people.
Weren't I? Wasn't I an honorary veil? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just haven't. I haven't talked to Silver in a long time. Um. Yeah, I think she's just been doing her own thing. You know. Sometimes people fall out of touch with each other. I keep up with her though. I showed her a picture like last month when I went to the gym. I always go to the gym with her um, t-shirt. I bought her merch and then her little mascot is in my bathroom. So I see it every time I, I pee. <laughs> it was also very cute to see Gmart very engaged in chat. Is that right? It sounds like you... It sounds like you guys like Gmart. I was talking to Kraken about it this morning. Um, and I was like, why Why do you think that is? And he was like, it just sounds like you guys have a good dynamic. Gmart was pretty funny. I like Gmart. You three are my favorite collab. Oh, do you mean that? Do you mean it? Gmart cool, okay? Gmart is poggers. <laughs> She might is literally me, smile. <laughs> you and Jimar are actually kind of surprisingly charismatic duo. Oh my god, tell me more. Tell me more. I followed you based off of that collab. You had such a good chemistry. You guys are so fucking nice. I I'm eating it up. I'm mm, mm, I'm eating it. I'm eating I'm eating good today. I think um I, I like Mel because we can we can travel that path of sexuality without crossing a line. Um, and I've learned my lesson with comfortability levels. You know, we've talked offline about it and um, being mature and appropriate adults. So I, I feel comfortable with her that there's no miscommunication and vice versa. So I feel like now I can just be myself, you know? You're a good, wholesome cinnamon roll who attracts cool and good people. That always worried me for the longest time. I always felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb because I, I'm not a Zoomer and I don't get a lot of jokes. I'm a little bit slow and a little bit older, but I like being nice to as many people as I possibly can. And I always felt like I don't know. It made me feel like I didn't have any personality, but I'm glad that my head is on straight and I'm attracting the people that I want to be around and I'm finding a really good group of people. Oh my God, you guys are all coming in. Hi, I liked the collab yesterday. Mel was so sad in the beginning and she was just a happy little puddle by the end. I, yeah, I, 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 I could hear it in her voice. And we both, Fillion and I, were like, dude, if you need anything, like, please, 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 please reach out. So we've got a little group chat together. I think it's because you're unbashedly you. Yeah, like, please further explain this. Uh, it, give me more. What, 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 what does unabashedly you mean? You got a sub from me from me last night. Listen, I'm really sorry. If you subscribed last night and you hear me yelling, I, I apologize. Also, I should probably turn this off. I'm, am I scaring anyone? I'm sorry. Let's let's turn that down. <clears throat> Maybe you've talked like that with Shy Lily. Uh, no. I mean, Shy Lily was the one who got me comfortable talking about bathroom stuff. Uh, on the stream because I I've, I never did that before I never felt comfortable but I shy Lily really gave me confidence to feel more comfortable I think but no I I don't I don't flirt like that like just to flirt with another woman I flirt like that when with someone that I like enjoy in that way shy lily i respect as like a just a like a 
like a friend. I don't like. I don't know how else to put. I'm not gonna Yuri bait. You know what I mean? Just because that she's a cute girl. Um, I've never talked to Shy Lily like that before. I usually keep it pretty, pretty kosher. Does that make sense? I hope I didn't say something I shouldn't have. Also, Valdern, I'm glad you feel that way. I'm new here, but yeah, I'm just singing you a bit with Philly and Mel. We'll be here more. Dude, Wicked, thank you. We need chiller music here going on. I don't often see or hear you hold yourself purely based upon social norms. If ever I see you hold back, it's because you're worried about the feelings of the person or people you're with, not because you worry about how the outside world perceive you. Okay. I'm just happy to see that you guys um, are happy and you have a good time with all of us together. I I know when we... God damn it, I love Doom, but is there like a... Is there Doom... Doom Lo-Fi? Let's, let's see if this exists. Doom Radio. Okay. Um Okay, can you can you just give me give me a, a, a like villain music or like like a mixture of doom with lo-fi? One second. I got there's got to be something. There's got to be What about like a Fucking, uh, fucking, uh, what the fuck? Uh... Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, I'm just surprised. I think, um, Lena as a streamer never really felt like a character to me. It feels like just you being you in front of a microphone. Yeah, I. Ever since I started VTubing, that's exactly who I who I wanted to be. I wanted to be just an extension of myself so that if you were to ever see me in person, you'd be like, yeah, that's Lena. You know what I mean? <clears throat> also, I'm really sorry if I sound nasally. I'm still recovering from COVID. It's nice to kick back and just listen. It doesn't really matter what's going on, though. I do like learning new horror games from you. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying how much I've been sticking to the to horror since I've gotten back. I love that you guys feel that this is like a comfy place. I'll take it. I'll take it. Also, Spooky, welcome back for six months. I think that's why I, I like Billion a lot as well and Mel. Every time with Fillion, she's like, of course, she's an entertainer through and through. But I think we've both come to an understanding that 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 um, that's her as an entertainer. And she respects me for just being me. And I think that's all it is. It's not it's it's kind of goes beyond just personalities matching. It's just a form of mutual respect and acceptance for who we are. And I think that that's tough. I mean, you could say yeah, all of us VTubers um, respect each other. And I think to a certain extent we do. But it's a matter of seeing beyond what clicks on stream and just being ourselves and being okay with it. Does that make sense? I hope that's making sense. Where are you from? I was born in the States, but I live in New Zealand. I've been here for about 10 years. I'd like to point out that my observations of you come from me being a person on the autism spectrum. So I've always been very uh, appreciative of people who are very upfront and straightforward. You say what you mean and I don't have to play mind games and guessing if there's some subtle social norm aspect that I'm missing. I appreciate hearing that a lot, actually. Um, yeah, I've definitely gotten in a lot of trouble for being straight up, straight up and down. <laughs> but I'd, I'd just rather be that without any guessing games. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I, super, I feel super comfortable here. Damn, Demon Venus, thank you so much for chatting. Welcome. I can't watch much, but for the reason, your voice is super soothing.
I'm sorry. He wants her so bad. I. My bad. I have to say that the whole conversation with Mel felt very tactful and mature, and that's a vibe I can actually hang with in regards to sexuality. When people just throw horny into my face, I tune out. Well, I mean, come on. Well, let's not lie. I, I said some some pretty off the cuff shit that I normally I normally wouldn't. Um, so it did get pretty detailed, but I, I you know, I it was it was sprinkled on top of maturity. So I'm not I'm not gonna say that I was a saint by any means. After a long day, it's always great coming here. You're super chill and have a great mindset to things. It helps the ease of overstimulation. Yeah, I I appreciate hearing that. You guys know firsthand how worried I was last year not fitting in with the VTubers because I'm so different, but I think it was like, what, six months ago or something that I said that I know exactly who I am and what I want to be and I'm okay with it now. And I know exactly the path that I'm traveling uh, from here on out and it's been great ever since. I blame you that I have not delved into looking up lo-fi metal. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing until a moment ago. <laughs> oh, I see a Kraken, a Kraken sub. Hi, Blue Okashi. <clears throat> no, it's like five more days. No breaks. Man, no breaks. Man, you guys are so nice today. What? What is? Wait, Lena feels it. Wait, you guys want to send me your favorite clips from yesterday? I feel like I'm gonna be super embarrassed watching this. I haven't been here long, but I can confirm that the stream seems very autism friendly. That's that's good. That's good, right? That's good? Hi there, I'm new here and I instantly feel very comfortable. What is going on? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Um, okay, let's see. What, what do we have here? Why are you so... Oh, it's the cat. You're coming! And she's humping the cat, and and the dog's like, I, I, I the cat, oh. <laughs> uh, I'm just constantly just trying to get them to just. Sorry, Bronchomatic, welcome back for 24 months. Nice to see you again. Um. Yes, I actually have a sponsor for Resident Evil 4. Isn't that cool? This is the, the biggest sponsor opportunity I've ever had. There's three Cooksy clips. Cooksy? Wait, what? No, 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 no. No, really? Cooksy, you fucking didn't. Yeah, you did. Okay. <clears throat> well, I guess we're going to check these out. Uh, shit. Ooh, ooh, I'm big. One second. Uh-uh. Why am I so big? Chloe? <sighs> All right, what do we got here? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Feel it. <laughs> the cooksie. <Wait> a <laughs> like, feel it. You are getting so close Wait, to me. Mel, no. are you good? Oh, wait, hold on. Are you trying to have a sneak, a, a grab? You can grab them. Here. What's happening? What? what am I looking at? You guys, what are you guys? Ah. Grab them? Bye. Ah. My gayness! Oh! <laughs> wait, where'd she go? Melody? Hello? Wait, you scared her off! I did, what? She was getting really close, so Bella, I gave her permission. She ran away like she was a Safari Zone Pokemon. She just grabbed oh, it and left? I guess. I guess I have that. The second. little, <laughs> the little bounce. Hey, hey what's up? <laughs> Welcome back, Melody. Oh, uh, what a, what a, what a lovely stream. That was just like a mixture of a bunch of cute, fun interactions. I Absolutely, Fillion. I, I have broken three chairs with my butt. 
two of them from oh dabbing. How is that possible when you don't have a butt? <laughs> oh. I have a butt. That's the. That's the. Come on. You show me on that model where there's a butt. There's no butt there. No. Yeah. Yeah. You, wow. wow. I just spilled my rice. Show us. Your rice I don't believe it. Here. Okay, here. I'm gonna slam my hand down my butt in real life. You ready? One, two, okay. three. There's no ass there. There literally is. There's see? No, no that's I don't see why. it. I don't see no, it. But no, but when I do it on my chest, look, look. <clears throat> Wait. What the frick is tracking is bringing? There's nothing there. <laughs> but... <laughs> I have a butt. Kind of. Nah. Chat, uh, on a scale from one to ten, how flat ass? <laughs> 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 I'm getting Ooh. roasted. I want this game. Mel, you see me, IRL. What's my ass like? Billion! <laughs> Did you know cars have three wheels? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see Philly's reaction at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let's, let's go back. Go from one to ten. How flat ass? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Fillion, just watch her. <laughs> I'm getting Ooh. roasted. I want this game. Mel, you see me, IRL. What's my ass like? <laughs> She's so cute! <laughs> Fillion, oh god. Oh boy. <sighs> wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> Sounds like you're nervous. Oh. Hmm. You sure? Wait, I'm just, I'm just really, really, really subby and gross a lot. Like I'm, I'm just a lot of depravity, and and I just like I feel like I'm a bit extreme for most people. It kind of sounds like we're the perfect match. <laughs> that one moment, that one, like, I don't know how her model, her model was so perfect. I like, I don't know how, like, her model did that. And it was like, you can actually, like, just wait. <laughs> Look. Oh my god, I, I, oh, oh my god, wait, wait. And, and I just like, I feel like I'm a bit extreme for most people. It kind of sounds like we're the perfect match. <laughs> I think I just watched her soul leave her body. I, I'm almost certain. Can someone clip that? I literally just saw her soul, like, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is she okay? I'm sorry. I'm just not playing into it. I'm sorry, Chad. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I I'm sorry. I okay. Let's. Oh, there's what? There's more. Okay. Enter enter uh, by the numbers, Chad. You know, I know it's seeming like uh, you guys are a bit of the reveal, but you know. <laughs> How, how you how you doing, chat? You guys, you guys okay? You guys, uh, you know, you guys feeling yourselves? That's not. Oh, that's not what I meant. I just, oh, oh god damn it! Oh yeah, I haven't like like you like you 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 feeling like co like you you feeling good? Um. <laughs> I mean, like, are you are you like feeling good? Are you, I, just, I gotta go. Yeah, you feeling good? That's not what I meant. Ah. Uh, Oh god. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys sent me some some what's this one? What's this? You don't normally feel it, but some people can, depending I feel on it. the sensitivity. Oh, moving on. And so people expect that from me, but I wouldn't like I don't know put that depravity upon another. I don't know. Or is it the oh the soul is left clip yeah so <laughs> anyway yeah that was the that was the that was the fun that was that was the that.
<laughs> hey Mike Graves. Welcome on in. How you doing? I don't know why why I'm listening to this music. I, I missed the Doom music already. Can we what's the next one? I miss I I come on, can we get like well how about relaxing relaxing doom? Oh yeah, that's it. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Hi, Mide. How you doing? Chill out if I do beats to study too. Hey, can you guys hear this okay? Is it loud and clear? Is it a little bit too in the background? Um, the best thing about that clip was that Layton was AFK and when Mel was talking about the feeling and I just came back to it. I feel it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to leave that conversation in yesterday's uh, stream, but yeah. <laughs> a little quiet. All right. I got you. Is that better? I, I really like this version, but I think that when people initially click on the stream, it kind of maybe makes them feel like I'm too edgy or weird or creepy. And they're like, oh, I don't want to watch this. You know what I mean? I still don't understand that people say you have no personality. You have so many amazing moments like that. Yeah, I actually get that a lot. I, for the past like year or so, um, I've been told like, I'm really boring which honestly in hindsight i kind of believe them so that's okay my personality seems like i have no personality because i don't have the typical vtuber personality people say oh oh hey chippy yo yeah all the time you know in various places on the internet i i'm 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 charmless i have no charisma i'm boring i don't people don't know why i'm watched which you know what it's totally cool I don't mind. Not everyone's gonna like you, and I'm a lot. I'm a lot slower and less energetic than a lot of people. I love your personality. I, so we were talking about you yesterday, by the way, Chibi. I was suggesting that maybe you and I hang out and we play some of your favorite Nintendo co-op games. What do you reckon? I would love to hang out with you. I feel like the last time we did was when you met Kraken, and that's it. I really want to do something with you, if that's okay. She's just like me. Me when watching Lena. Oh, that's really nice. What are your what are your I don't I don't mean to interrupt you or anything, Chibi. What are your favorite co-op Nintendo games? But no, I don't mind at all. I don't mind. Like, I know that I'm I'm different and I know that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. And I, I finally had to be okay with that, like six months to a year ago. Like I cannot be like everyone else to succeed because that's not who I am. It's not me. To be honest, I didn't really get your personality until I saw you collab with Fillion. You're so good in that I've been uh, a severe lurker since. Oh, thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you for continuing to try. I really appreciate it. I understand it might take a bit to grow in people. Which it also just means that I have taken the time to really um, grow a very specific community. So now that's why I have so much faith and respect for my community because I know exactly the kind of people that are in my stream. You're very genuine and cozy. I think that in itself is really nice. Oh, thank you. You say that as that my like chest is ripped open and I've got giant hands twitching and blood form and you know, you know <laughs> like no big deal, no big deal. Let me. <laughs> yeah, I I I like to be calm and cozy here. <laughs> Sacred, welcome to the community. Thank you so much for subscribing.
Man, I, I cannot wait for you guys to see the new stuff. I say that, but I'm actually, I'm really enjoying, like, going back to my original outfit when I started. Like, God, I love this. I love this outfit so much. I love that Vizonia put so much time and effort that when you're, when I'm in, like, um, true form, the entire outfit, like, rips. Is it this one that rips? Yeah, like, look. Oh, okay, it, excuse the, the, the flickering of the bloom. Let me turn that off. But, um, so much care and attention to detail was put into this model. Like, Vizonia just really knocked this out of the park, man. Yeah, I, I will forever be in love with this, uh, with this idea. Uh, I don't have the cut open mouth anymore because it was really hard to make blend shapes for, but we will be working on that in the future uh, 3D model. So don't you worry. This is right. But anyway, if you guys are tuning in today, do you guys know what today is? I first saw you in Philly's dating show with Lily. You have a ton of charisma. That stream cracked me up. Oh, thank you. I, I was traveling at the time, so I didn't have my 3D model. It's Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah, we're finally doing unfiction today. After many, many months of promising all of you guys unfiction, it's finally here. Tuesday. So what kind of unfiction are we doing today? Do you guys know? International Day of Forests? What is that? What is unfiction? Oh, good thing you asked. <clears throat> I got this. I got this. I got this. <clears throat> Nonfiction is an umbrella term that refers to a large range of artistic works that all share a common theme. They exist in their own fictional worlds as if they belong in reality. In other words, nonfiction pretends to be telling a real story, even though it's fictional. So like Blair Witch Project, or Marvel Hornets, or Thunder Man. Not a horror fan, but the Derpy Lana model made me follow. We're going to be using it off and on, I promise. That's one of my favorite models to use on the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say SCP falls under in fiction. Absolutely. ARGs, SCPs, all of that. Yep, yep. 100%. So if you're looking for something to put on in the background while you're working, or you don't know what a fiction is and you're curious about what it is, I got you. That's today. Today, all you have to do is relax. Put me on your phone, your TV, your computer, your background. Whatever it is you're doing, all you have to do is listen. Yeah, unfiction. We do a lot of unfiction deep dives here. So does Nightmind is the perfect person to go to if you're wanting to know. Like, say you watched all of the backroom stuff and you still don't quite understand does a lot of like quote unquote deep dives so <clears throat> let me fix my bloom again this is this is really really ticking me off hold on i'm just i'm just fucking with this one second guys where did it go you guys don't know i'm messing with the bloom one second there oh god it's worse this is so fucking annoying 
Yeah, you see that big flicker with like the white? <sighs> almost, almost. I don't know. I'm moving around like there. I don't know. Okay. No, that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna piss me off. One second, guys. Hold your toes. Uh, okay, 0 0.90, 1 1.1, 6, 1 1.3, and 3.1. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> All right, without further ado, let me take you on the journey of Vita Carnis. Welcome. If this is your first journey into unfiction, I cannot wait to take you onto this adventure. Uh, how many people in the chat right now have no idea what unfiction is or have never experienced an unfiction? I'm new here. Hi, welcome. Where am I? Where, where am I? <clears throat> Me. I think I haven't. But analog core count? Yes. Yes, it does. <clears throat> okay. How many people... Yes. Yes. Um, Unfiction is Mandela Catalog. How many people have heard of... Uh, what is it called? They're like people in the house, whatever that one was. Mandela Catalog, SCPs. Blair Witch Project, Marble Hornets. Has anyone heard of any of those titles? <clears throat> well, that all falls under the umbrella of unfiction, where you're watching something, you're like, is this real? Is this real? What is that? I can't tell if it's real, but this is really creeping me out. That That's what unfiction is, essentially. Gemini Home Entertainment? Absolutely. So in it, there's a whole wide range of unfiction. Sometimes there's ARGs where you have a story and they're kind of peppered along the internet and you have to, I don't know, find a sort of code that leads you to a different URL, which leads you to a download file. And then you find that information, which leads you to a link that shows you, tells you more of the story. So there's a lot of things like that, or there's snippets of ARGs that are completely already compiled into a playlist on YouTube, which is what I prefer to do because when you go too far in that direction, it takes too much of stream time. But, um, <clears throat> like for instance, if has anyone played the game um, Inscription? Inscription is 100% an example of unfiction, which is why I liked it so much. Is that when you played it, and as you played it, it actually was an ARG. And when you watched, and I don't, I don't want to go too far into it, but it's someone delving into this game that they found. That is nonfiction. So that's the, the reality mixed with fiction. So that's what I like to do. Um, I think we've been doing this ever since I started VTubing. Um, we used to do it a lot more often, but as we, as we kind of trudged through like Allen Tutorials, Marble Hornets, uh, it, it started to get harder to find good ones. And there's, it's harder to find ones that are completed. Oftentimes there's like short, uh, short bouts of them. Um, oh, oh, children that live on their house, I think was one of them was fantastic. So fucking good. Um, but I would like to, to tap back into that as a lot of the community, especially I'm looking at you, Nocturne has filled our unfiction room in the discord with lots and lots and lots of unfictions. So I will be going over unfictions once a week. So if you're like, I'm not a fan of horror games, I'm not a fan of collabs. I don't like any of that. I just like watching YouTube videos of things that I haven't seen before. I, I, on fiction. Well, tune in once a week. I got you covered, buddy. Also, Grape is freaking amazing. Please go follow Grape. I would really appreciate it. Hi, Grape. I see you. All right. <clears throat> what is the Discord actually? Here you go. All right. If I'm too much in the way, you just let me know. And without further ado, let me know if it's too loud or too quiet. We begin the journey 
A Vita Carnis Living Meat Research Documentary 1 into The Crawl. Welcome. Enjoy. This video talks about gore and imagery of graphics and content like violence, death, has flashing lights. Federal law prohibits severe civil and criminal penalties for the unauthorized viewing of this footage. On planet Earth, life has thrived for millions of years. Creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish in all types of environments. From barren wastes to lush forests, life can be found. Earth has homed these creatures since the dawn of life itself. Only until very recently, things have changed. New life forms have appeared all around the globe and completely changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself. That is why we, at National Living Meat Research, have been studying these new species, trying to help educate everyone about these creatures and their wondrous ways of life. First, what are these new life forms? Welcome back, baby. Since their explosive arrival across the globe in 1931, there has been much debate on what these newcomers are, and where they came from. <clears throat> are they extraterrestrials coming to invade Earth? Or are they demons who come from hell to purge humanity? From what our scientists have discovered, no. The origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. We don't know why or how, but one thing is for certain, Earth is now their home. What these creatures are is mysterious and still not well known today. But here is what we do know. These creatures are comprised mainly of muscle tissue, organs, and bones. They greatly resemble animals with- Oh no, did, did ads start right as we started this? I don't want any to miss out, so I guess we can just- <laughs> Let's just take a moment for those that are watching the ads. Um, sorry guys. I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn off ads. I think we um, talked about it yesterday. But I do want to turn off the ads next month. I just don't know how. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did you put on subtitles? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. <clears throat> is it even possible? I don't know. But just the idea that we don't know if it's possible to turn off the ads is alarming. Can you move the subtitles? Yeah. With no skin. You guys want it up here? Down here? In the middle? On the side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you just grab it and you move it. You guys didn't... Oh, take it easy. No, our things are hanging out with us today. Bottom, middle. All right, you got this. Also, Cat Person, 1996, welcome back for two months, as well as Dark Lord Shadow, gifting a sub to JM. Thank you so much. Uh, Dark Lord Shadow, thank you so much for gifting that to Galmar as well. Thank you. Octoboops, welcome on in. How are we doing with the ads? We, we, uh... <laughs> the good news is that you got, I think it's like 30, 40 minutes until more ads play, so... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Thorium Prime, welcome to the community. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Ads are done. All right. Final call. We good? All right. Or store bought meat. Because of these character origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. Okay. We don't know why. So or these how, creatures appeared in 1930s. Is Earth is now their home. What these creatures are is mysterious and still not well known today. But here is what we do know. These creatures are comprised mainly of muscle tissue, organs, and bones. They greatly resemble animals with no skin, or store-bought meat. Because of these characteristics, they have been named accordingly as, Vita Carnies. The carny species consume decaying, organic matter, but their main diet is composed of raw meat not including their carnies relatives. The carnies only appear in places where there is an abundance of crawl, 
which leads to the first creature of the Carnies species, the crawl. The crawl is a growth of meaty tendrils that closely resemble the small intestine. So, uh, S2, thank you. Echo, thank you so much for joining the community. Demon, welcome to the community. Shadow, welcome back. And you guys, thank you so much for gifting subs. Yes, this we are watching an ARG. The only difference being the dark red coloration. These tendrils grow in a similar pattern as vines, mold, or fungi. A primary stem structure is the oh God, host of divisions it. of other, smaller branches. In each tendril contains a variety of veins, arteries, and other similar organs used to transport nutrients absorbed from its surroundings. The ends of these tendrils are equipped with organelles used to absorb water, and organic matter necessary for growth. The source of these organic materials is mainly found in dirt and soil on surrounding surfaces. Using its root-like tendrils, it absorbs the material and processes it into usable energy. Although, the crawl also obtains energy through another means. Using a sophisticated form of photosynthesis, the dark pigmentation of the smaller branches is ideal for absorbing sunlight, and therefore allowing solar energy to fuel the crawl's growth. Because of its efficiency, it thrives in almost all types of environments, easily allowing it to spread across the world, and can be found pretty much anywhere. Hmm. Okay. Its recent inclusion in the ecosystem has caused many major changes in nature's balance. One may assume that the crawl's presence may outcompete any other competitors, but due to its unique life cycle, where old branches fall off and decay into nutrient-rich compost, all forms of life seemingly flourish instead. The crawl's abundance grants plenty of nourishment to all animals, from plants feeding on the decayed crawl, herbivores thriving on increased plant population, and carnivores feeding on both the abundant prey, and are able to eat the crawl as well. The presence of all these animals leave behind waste, which will be broken down and consumed by the crawl, and the cycle begins again. It's almost like maggots. This form of symbiosis leads to an environment where all populations thrive. Humanity also uses the crawl to our advantage. Because of the supernatural rate of growth and its richness in nutrients, it has been sustainably cultivated into domestic farms. The crawl is harvested and processed into fertilizer, which greatly increases crop yield and quality. The crawl may also be used as a food source for humans, and reliably so. But due to its unkindly appearance and taste, it has yet to reach cuisine standards. The crawl also plays a very important role in the next creatures that we have been studying. Sometimes, in a crawl populated environment, a node of meat may develop on one of the branches. Oh God, this node gross. will fall off and grow into a functioning organism, and go to live on as an independent animal. What the fuck? This leads us to the upcoming species that we will be discussing. The first of these creatures are, the trimmings. Hang on. Now we begin our deep dive. You guys ready? This is where it gets fucking fun. Okay? Okay? Okay, what was that? Oh, I, oh! Okay, what is this? Is this like a storybook entry? Because we can't, I can't see what it says. But this clearly looks like it's from a storybook, like a fairy tale. It, yeah, this is the first video. You didn't miss too much. Don't worry. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, I guess let's continue. What do you guys think so far? First time viewers, has it gotten your attention yet? <laughs> I'm glad. The trimmings. Trimmings are small animals that resemble skinned raccoons. They are oh. commonly known to have a plump body, round head, small eyes, nose and ear holes, and an agape mouth. They are also equipped with a diversity of limbs. All individual trimmings are unique each with a different body shape, number of limbs, and other characteristics. 
One thing they all share in common is that they are made mostly of meat tissue and are a maximum of 20 centimeters in length, no the larger than a basketball. That's huge! Its life starts with its separation from the crawl. It will wonder to find anything that is edible and able to consume. Although it isn't omnivore, being able to hunt meat and forage for plant matter, trimlings are almost entirely scavengers. Their diet consists of rotting plants and meat. Including, okay, that's not so bad. Not limited to fruits, vegetables, roots, seeds, insects, and deceased animals. Although its appearance is unsightly, oh, Jesus. it is a cowardly creature, only fleeing, screeching, and hiding when threatened. Because of its lack of defensive traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making it easily overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. Naturally, its population would eventually die out, which is not the case. Oh, I missed on fiction so freaking much. All right, here we go. Mass trimming infestation. Estimated 400 plus trimmings gathered under a large abandoned satellite dish. Huh. What do you guys think that means? 400 plus trimmings. That's a lot of little guys. Flesh fleas? Oh god, that sounds so gross. <laughs> Which is not the case. The crawl constantly produces a large quantity of trimmings, hey, well, well. keeping up their numbers. Naturally, trimmings can be found wherever there is abundant crawl. Trimmings grow at a decent pace, reaching maturity at around seven months, having a maximum lifespan of two to four years. Oh, Christ. Although they are plentiful, humanity has no proper way to implement trimmings into society. Their overabundance has even considered them pests. Due to them digging through trash bins and making excessive noise at night. Besides all of this, some people still keep trimmings as pets <laughs> and relatively domesticate them. Nuisance or not, trimmings are a wondrous <gasps> creature. From their plentiful numbers to their skittish nature, they are truly a thing to behold. The next species on our list is the meat snake. Oh, God. Okay, let's see what we got here. How you doing, Wobo? It's nice to see you. The meat snake, huh? All right, what happened? Where did the where did the little where did it go? I missed it. it. Said meat snake, and something popped up. Ready for work? Wait, are you going to work now? You stop by the stream before you had to go to work. Where is it? Ah. So it looks like it's why why are we seeing little pages from a like a a storybook? You're my morning time streamer. <gasps> hey chat, can we all say hi to Wobo? I know you know Wobo. He's that wonderful Australian funny guy that often streams uh with Kraken. He's great. Hi, Wobo. We hope you have a good day at work today. <laughs> look, look at all the love for Wobo. Hell yeah. That's during the travels of air, air something. A great storm struck. It was so powerful it swayed the boat. The royal family rode and pushed the prince out into the sea. Interesting. Also, Flips versus the world. Welcome to the community. Thank you so much for the support. The meat snake. The meat snake is a worm-like creature made of a variety of types of meat coated in a transparent skin-like membrane. Its size varies during its lifespan depending on how much it consumes. 
When it first separates oh, from the crawl, that's it is so only gross. a few centimeters in length. Eventually, it will reach an average length of five meters. Although, under extreme conditions, like natural disasters, war, or plague, it can greatly surpass this length. Yep. Bro, I, I love it when ARGs do that. Okay, what do we, what do we got? Largest meat snake ever discovered during a sweep of underground sediments made during the something massive sized meat snake was discovered stuck inside an underground something. The beast was measured at a total of 40 meters in length. Believe that the bodies gathered during the war, the creature causing to reach the unbelievable size cult activity. Oh, shit. 40 meters in length of a meat snake, supposedly relevant to cult activity. Please surpass this length. The meat snake's diet consists entirely of dead animals or parts. A meat snake is incapable of consuming a healthy, living organism. The meat snake allocates its food by using a tongue-like organ covered in sensors to touch and feel its environment. The sensors catch particles of decaying meat, notifying the meat snake that there is food nearby. I'd be one year brace for science. This process Thank shares many so similarities to regular snakes, hence the meat snake's name. Once it locates the corpse, the meat snake will open its jaw and swallow the entire body whole. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Vivi says, Google is not showing anything. I'm going to assume none of these are real. That's the joy of unfiction. There you have it. That's why unfiction is so good. Also, TND, welcome for a whole year. I appreciate that. No, 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 no. Don't, this isn't, this isn't like poo-pooing what he said it's that no no no. <laughs> that's what makes this so fun and so cool because you're like is this real is this real i can't tell if this is real that's why it's amazing it's it's good it could be real once the entire body is consumed the meat snake's stomach will release a variety of chemicals some will break down soft tissue like skin and the connection points between muscles. Others' chemicals will then ferment and preserve the tissue to keep it from breaking down for as long as possible. After that, the remaining flesh and bones will move along the meat snake's tract and slowly be implemented into its own structure, extending the meat snake. Unsatisfactory parts like skulls, pelvises, hair, and fingernails will be excreted. Wait. Speaking of skulls, what? the meat snake will take the skull from the consumed organism and use it as its own. What? Each meat snake has its own skull, what? Each corresponding to what that one has consumed. During its lifespan, it will swap or replace these skulls if needed. A meat snake's lifespan depends entirely on how much a meat snake consumes. The longest one has lived for was 28 years. Oh my god. The meat snake has no predators and is immune to disease due to its preserving chemicals. The only significant ways a meat snake can die is through starvation, burning, or complete destruction of the meat snake's membrane coating. Interestingly, the meat snake is the only member of the Carnies family that is able to reproduce. When a meat snake reaches an excessive size, and is in the conditions to do so, it will commence mitosis, splitting oh. itself in two. Then the now two meat snakes will go on their separate ways and live on as two distinct organisms. Meat snakes can only be found in moderate temperature climates, not too hot, not too cold. Their population depends entirely on the amount of corpses available. Where there is death, there are meat snakes. Okay. Humanity will use them to our advantage. Meat snakes are a very efficient and clean way of disposing of any meat products. The preserving fluid within the meat snake's body disinfects the carrion, preventing the spread of disease. Humans use meat snakes in butcher shops as a waste bin, dispose roadkill, within okay. war on the battlefield to dispose of festering bodies and parts, okay, and within yeah. zoos to dispose of deceased animals. Okay. They are extremely tame, not caring if any creature is around them. Only I would own a meat snake, I'm almost positive. Also. Um, 
Uh, there's a comment here. Uh, no named. I usually avoid horror stuff because I hate jump scares, but this is genuinely entertaining. That means a lot to hear. I'm glad. I and uh, Oni Ray, welcome back for three months. I I think I would own a pet meat meat snake if if um. Yeah, with everything that that is said, I would probably have two or three. Yeah. Acting defensively when it is within consuming a meal. This means they are very easy to tame. Overall, meat oh, snakes Jesus. are a marvelous creature with a very interesting way of sustaining itself. It is an amazing experience to encounter one, as long as you don't mind the smell. Our next creature is the mimic. Yo, it's just like progressively getting worse. Stinky boy. I imagine, I wonder if he live, leaves like goop behind like a slug. After being stranded at sea, the young prince eventually was cast to an island. Injured, the prince stumbled his way into a nearby cave. The prince used that magic he could to put himself into a healing sleep. Damn, this is good. I gotta sneeze. The Mimic. The Mimic is a bipedal creature with uncanny similarities to humanoid anatomy. <laughs> they greatly resemble humans without skin, with added exaggerated features. These <sighs> features include extended finger length, longer limbs. Oh god, ads again? Is it just one person that has ads? Dude, we just had ads like five minutes ago. Is this a joke? I feel like only five minutes have passed. What's happening? I'm so sorry. I don't understand. Okay, what? I I have no I have no uh, stake in this. I don't I don't have any control of that. Um, I'm so sorry. Here, I'll I'll get some subs as well. Kite in the storm. Thank you so much for gifting subs. I really appreciate that. Here, let me give some as well. I'm so sorry. It it seems like maybe there's like a different group when they come in or something. I joined 20 minutes ago, no ads. I don't understand that. Thank you guys so much. I, I, uh, wow, my tits are massive in this outfit. Holy shit. Wow. God. <laughs> Otaku, uh, welcome on in. Thank you for joining the community. Oh, there they go. Thank you. Nice and small. I appreciate that, Salix. Thank you, everyone who gifted subs. Thank you for the bits. I really appreciate it. Uh, just joined. No ads. Dark Shadow, thank you as well. I really appreciate it. I'm so sorry. Um, oh my god. Shade Lang, thank you so much for gifting those subs to the community. I really hope that these subs help someone so that we can uh, enjoy not having ads. I had ads. Nothing happened. We, we paused. Uh, hopefully those that don't have ads are understanding of those that do have ads. You could open the ad manager and pause them when you need it. Oh, how do I do that? One second, guys. Uh, what is, where is ad manager settings? Is it under partner? Ads manager. I don't see like a pause button. I just see ad spacing, ad length, start delay, roll ads. Pre-roll ads for incoming viewers is disabled. Uh, nine minutes per hour is what it says. It's under your creator dashboard. Oh, okay, one second. Okay, creator dashboard. Edit stream info, clip that. I see run one one minute ad break. I'm so sorry. I don't I don't see You should be able to turn the timer down. 
Also, Ren uh, Rendar, uh, welcome back for 19 months. Sorry, give me one second. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see where you just pause it. Stop raids for one hour. Add stream marker, stream delay, manage your poll, manage goals, raid channel, target email only, run one minute, uh, snoo oh, snooze ads. Oh, I see it. It's, that's new. Okay, snooze ads. It only says snooze ads for five minutes. That's it. That's it. I'm only allowed to snooze ads for five minutes. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? That is the most... <laughs> uh, okay, alright. I'm sorry. Gives you a heads up. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll keep this open then, I think. Uh, oh, holy shit! Laughing me on 25 gifted subs. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. <laughs> Thank you. Goodness me. I, I do apologize, but also thank you for the support. Um, I think the only time that I can change up the ads and stuff is next month for the next like opt-in, which is in the next few days. Um, because if I turn it off now, then everything gets fucked, I think. I don't know. I'll, I'll also ask my, my partner manager. But yeah, I I'm very sorry. Reality Arrow, thank you for the gifting subs. Now I'm going to give some more so I can also get my tits back in order. Oh, GH, thank you so much and welcome on in. I appreciate that. I just made them bigger. I just made them bigger. Can I? Oh my God. I'm sorry. There we go. Let's begin. Extended finger length, longer limbs, bulging. Empty eyes, and their most prominent feature, a teeth-filled smile. Although it resembles a happy face, this is due to coincidence, and is only how their facial structure is shaped. The maw of the mimic contains much more teeth than humans, and mm. their teeth is comprised. Yeah, can we start? The mimic is a bipedal creature with uncanny similarities to humanoid anatomy. They greatly resemble humans without skin, with added exaggerated features. These features include extended finger length, longer limbs, bulging, empty eyes, and their most prominent feature, a wide, teeth-filled smile. Although it resembles a happy face, this is due to coincidence, and is only how their facial structure is shaped. The maw of the mimic contains much more teeth than humans, and their teeth is comprised almost entirely of incisors, with some canine and premolars in the back. This is tooth composition is ideal for biting down onto meat and swallowing chucks whole. A mature mimic's diet is comprised entirely of human flesh. Awkward, awkward bit. Um, did you guys catch that? Uh, Matcha, welcome in. Because of this, they're found <laughs> solely around human populated areas. The mimic's life cycle is made of three stages. In the first stage, a young mimic separates from the crawl. They closely resemble their trimming relatives, but are thin, sleek, Ooh. and only have four appendages. In this stage, the young mimic will hunt small animals, moving on to larger and larger as they grow. Once large enough, it will begin metamorphosis into the next stage of life. Once fully transformed, it will resemble the description mentioned in the beginning. Its hunting style changes and becomes much more complicated. It now stalks and feeds only on humans. Oh it my will god. Hit human populated area and begin its search for an easy target. To blend in, it may use objects to conceal itself. These include clothing mannequins, and furniture. Once a target has been found, 
the mimic will observe its prey and learn its routine and when it is most vulnerable. This is typically when the human is asleep at night. Oh. Once the prey is within position, the mimic will advance silently until it is close enough. The mimic will then execute and immediately begin consumption. Once the mimic has had its fill, it will leave the scene, a fair distance away from the human population, and begin to digest its meal. Well, thank you so much for gifting those subs. Although, in the case that a human is awake, a mimic will use a variety of sounds to either lure or startle prey. Did you guys do that? Is that in the video? Is that in the fucking video? I'm so upset right now. I'm so upset. I I have a window. A, a whole wall of a window. Literally right next to my face. By my table. into cornering themselves once a human is in place it will <laughs> swiftly attack and kill the helpless target Oh no! stage of the mimic's life cycle has two potential morphs it may develop into. <laughs> oh my god! If the mimic has a consistent supply of food, it will develop more human-like features. It will grow skin, hair, and by the end will look nearly identical to a human being. It now can blend entirely into civilization, and lure other humans more effectively. <gasps> the second type of morph happens when a mimic receives an overabundance of food. It will grow into a larger, more evolved hunter. Its proportions will increase in length, and its humanoid features will fade away. It grows a thick, dark coating of a flexible skin, which is highly durable, and increases in strength the more the elder mimic consumes. This excludes the face, which is now coated in a pale pink skin. The mimic's teeth have also moved deeper into the mimic's throat, leaving its mouth a toothless grin. It uses the dark hue of its skin to hide seamlessly within a dark environment. Its skills have also been heightened. This makes an elder mimic one of the most efficient predators on the planet. Because of the obvious threat this poses on humanity, nations around the world have released instructions on how to be able to fend for yourself in a mimic encounter. Here are the instructions. 1. Avoid going out alone if your location is known to have mimics, or there have been mimic sightings. 2. If you encounter a stationary mimic, seemingly unfazed by your presence, quietly leave the location and alert your local authorities. 3. If pursued by a mimic, get yourself into a position where you are able to flee. Mimics will rarely attack if a person has a clear escape route. 4. In the event that you have been cornered by a mimic, roll into the fetal position, protecting your neck, face, and vital organs from attack.
Make as much noise as you can to alert any other people. 5. If you have a weapon, do not use it. A mimic is fairly resilient, and any strikes or shots on a mimic is not effective enough to bring it down in time. Oh Instead, shit! Use it as a barrier between you and the mimic to block any attacks. 6. In a situation where a mimic is hunting in the immediate area, and is not aware of your position, hide somewhere low, like under a bed or behind other furniture. A mimic will not linger too long to search for prey, and will move on. Be safe, and avoid any encounters with a mimic at all costs. Curl and scream into a Next ball. Up, the harvester. Oh wait, curl in a ball and scream, got it. Oh Jesus Christ, this is so- I fucking miss in fiction. How many of you guys have missed this? Because I- I sure fucking have. Oh jeez, I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. Can we go back to the meat tube thing? That felt safe. <laughs> uh, something, something, sleep was long. He slept for what seemed like forever. As he slept, the land around him changed and grew. It was unrecognizable from when the prince first arrived, but the sleep still needed time to heal the prince. Much more time, but it kept... The prince safe while he rested, guarding him from the elements as the land changed. Oh! You're welcome, Rizzo. The Harvester. The Harvester is a large, bulbous mass, with a large amount of tendrils spreading from the base. The bulb measures around 3 meters in height and 2 meters in diameter. The tendrils, on the other hand, can extend up to 150 meters in diameter horizontally. The harvester is a specialized form of crawl that grows in a unique and deadly way. A harvester is created when a node, that will grow into a harvester, instead of separating, continues to grow. Eventually, it will grow tendrils of its own. It uses the energy provided by its mother branch and expands its reach further, its tendrils, hidden just below the surface of the ground. The harvester is equipped with two types of specialized tendrils. The first type is bulky and flat. Oh, they geez. lie the closest to the surface. These branches are lined on each length of the tendril with spines, feet. extending in the shape of a bear trap. On each side of the branch, those particular spines have a vein that feed into them, that pump two types of venom. On one side, the spines can inject a neurotoxin, which will attack the nervous system of whomever it is injected into causing sudden paralysis. The other side can inject an anticoagulant, which when injected, prevents blood cells from clotting. Whenever a large animal moves across the area armed with these tendrils, the branches will clamp onto the animal and thrash violently. Once the prey has been injected with both venoms, the tendrils will rest and the prey will immediately collapse. The animal will be unable to move due to the paralysis, and the wounds caused by the thrashing spines will not stop bleeding. All the prey can do is lie patiently, until succumbing to blood loss. Once the prey has bled out, the second type of tendrils come in. They lie below the spine equipped once. These branches are thick, but very sturdy. They share similar anatomy to the small branches of the crawl, equipped with organelle that absorbs nutrients. These tendrils sense the blood, and move their way to the surface and begin to absorb the vital fluid. Once the blood has been consumed, the tendrils will wrap around the body and begin to shuffle downwards. This what? movement loosens the soil and slowly pull the body underground. Once secure, the tendrils will continue to feed until there is nothing but scraps. 
Hello, Reginald. Welcome back. The nourishment absorbed by the tendrils will be sucked back into the main bulb of the harvester. This bulb houses all the vital organs and the venom glands that pump into the spines. The nutrients are then converted into usable energy. The remains underground decompose, providing a rich soil, causing very prominent plant growth, which then attracts more animals. Oh god. A strange behavior the harvester displays is its choice of diet. The spines will only activate on larger animals, allowing smaller ones to pass by unaffected. The spines will also not activate on some species of bird. There are a couple theories as to why this happens. One, it could be that attacking smaller animals would cost too much energy for what they get in return, making it not worth the time. Another, could be that smaller animals may attract larger animals or predators, allowing a safe place where prey may thrive, and lure more predators. It truly is astonishing. Although it is a spectacular lucky. creature, it is also very dangerous. The harvester is decently rare, only populating sparse areas in the northern hemisphere and woodland forests. Hmm. If you are stunned by a harvester, there will be no way of helping you, being that there is no cure, and fatality is 100% positive. Oh. Oh. Okay, well... Oh, I guess that's it. Don't go into the forests, pretty much. 100%. Family attacked by harvester while hiking. Authorities refuse to handle the harvester, only putting up warning signs. Addressing the public to be careful. The best thing you can do is avoid encountering a harvester in the first place. Why, oh, hi, hi John, hiking, welcome back. Take note of any warnings or signs saying that there are harvesters around. If you also notice an abundance of lush, ground-dwelling plants in a forested area, and there are no signs of wildlife. This is suspicious and you should leave the area, staying close to the base of large trees or rocks. If you find yourself in the middle of a harvester ground, do not panic. Sudden movements may activate the tendrils and will inject you. Although a harvester is rather forgiving, do not risk any skittish movements. Remain calm. If you have any objects with considerable heft, like coats, backpacks, or full water bottles, gently take that object and lightly toss it towards the bulb, and away from your escape route. This will activate the spines on where the object lands, distracting the bulb for a moment. You will then slowly begin to do wide shuffles away from the bulb. If possible, throw another object when you are certain you are a fair enough distance away, just to be safe. Continue until you are completely sure you are out of harm's way. You may come out unscathed, but don't be too obnoxious, or you will be a harvester's next meal. God. Next up is the host. There's so I, uh, I'd love to talk to the creator of this just to see w how they came up with this. If this was all just like in the brain, they're like, you know what? I'm gonna come up with a new series of animals and creatures from this new kind of like strain of meat plant. I can't quite read this out. All I can see is the critters were struggling. Barely any food to go. Hmm. Really glad you guys are here and enjoying this. Hmm. The host of influence. The host of influence, more commonly referred to as the host, has its name derived from a host who invites guests to an event. Uh, wasn't that contradictory, though? First, the harvester can distinguish small animals uh, and then mistakes uh, backpacks for food. Well, I think if you have a heavy backpack and you throw it and it lands, that creates a lot of friction and weight, right? But if you're a little bunny and you're kind of like very light on your feet and you don't weigh a lot, I'm sure it just doesn't kind of um, take note of it. Like if you are very quiet and light and slow, you know what I mean? Versus like heavy weight, heavy movement, being able to detect that. I think that's the difference. The host 
has its name derived from a host who invites guests to an event. Not to be confused with a host, a harborer of parasites or disease. The host is a semi-humanoid looking organism. It has the structure of a head, torso, and arms. Other than this, it shares no other characteristics. The lower half of the host is comprised of a mass of fibrous tissue and tendrils that burrow into the ground to hold the host in place. Instead of skin, the host is covered in muscular tissue fibers, tendons, and veins. In some parts of the body are covered in a meaty plate, used to cover any large exposed areas, but allowing movement. The host's head has a smooth surface where the face should be, attached to a crooked neck, which houses a slit in the front used for feeding. On the host's back, is a mound of pores. Protruding from these pores are a hollow, hair-like structures, extending outwards. These hairs are barrels that release spores produced within host's body, by wait. being fired into the air. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No fucking way. Fuck off. Are you for real? No. The dude who made this is no fucking way. Is this a joke or did someone just make the Twitch name? I'm well, I'm gonna make fucking lose it. I said, had a story, found out what infiction was, as well as analog horror, and made it into reality. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's no way. People, people, give him a moment, give him a moment. Give him a moment. Am I getting trolled in one guide? Yes, tis me. No, flipping what? How did you find that we were doing this? Can I, can, how did you? I gotta know, before I even, I, I even get excited that the creator of the Sun Fiction uh, is here, how did you know? How did, how did you know? That's absolutely rad. It's linked on his Twitch. Oh. I checked Twitter for Vita fan stuff and say that you were going to stream it. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, dude, thank you so much for creating something so absolutely uh, amazing. That's so cool. What an honor for you to pop on by. Um, we we put a poll in the Discord yesterday to see which one we wanted to watch. And everyone, without hesitation, said that they wanted to watch Vita Karnas. Um, so we've, we've all had a really good time watching this so far. And really, really well done. Again, thank you so much for, for stopping by. Um, I, I love how the, it was a simplistic answer. You had an idea and then you just put it into being. I, I've got to know, though. So I'm guessing are all of these your your drawings? And, and I'm guessing you just like... I, I, I got to like... I want to pick your brain. You just, you, just, you just thought of an idea one day about these different kinds of creatures and how they work into the ecosystem and bada bing, bada boom, you put it together. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta add you on, on Twitter. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, dude, if you ever want to come onto the stream, um, you know, no, no pressure. I know some people can be pretty introverted. I would love to interview you and pick your brain on, on, um, on, on how this came to be. I'm sure all of us, especially at the end of watching this, would love to hear your thoughts on it. How cool. Yeah, what an honor. Jeez Louise, man. Absolutely high quality. If you guys don't know the uh the YouTube channel. Darian. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> how do how do I pronounce this the last name? Darian 
Quilloy. 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 Yeah, this is this has been absolutely fantastic. Enjoyed it a lot so far. We got we got a oh, ways to go as well. We're like not even in the in the middle of it. <laughs> the first video made me stop eating my chili. Ten out of ten. That's when you know it's good. Hold on, I gotta I gotta find you on on, on Twitter. Do you have Twitter on here on your on your Insta? Here, here. I got you. Oh, I love this. One second. You do have a Twitter. Dang. Okay, go follow his Twitter. Here you go. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> All right, we'll keep watching it. Dude, if you, like I said, uh, just hit me up in the DMs if you want to ever want to, like, come on and have a conversation. Uh, I, I'd be, I, it would, it would, it would be great. It would be absolutely great. <laughs> These sports are hazardous, so keep clear of them at all costs. Luckily, the mm. host is rare. Wait. Okay. We go back. What is this? Luckily. What? Wait, I think I missed two things. Hang on. This. Looks like people in a window. Cult? Okay. Luckily, the host is rare, only found in North America. Obtaining info about the host is a very risky and daunting task. This is because of their rarity and of how dangerous it is to be up close to one. The source released by a host is very dangerous when in hail. A host will release a cloud of spores into the air, which will be picked up by wind and carried great distances. If an organism inhales the spores, the particles will find their way into the organism's brain and infect them. An infected organism will show no symptoms of infection right away, but a couple hours after infection the infected organism's behavior and thought process will change. The first symptoms that appear are restlessness, sluggish movement, numbness of joints, and lack of coordination. Then more serious symptoms appear over time. These include dizziness, migraines, impaired speech, and trembles. If you or someone you know show these symptoms, contact poison control or emergency services. After a total of six to seven hours after infection, the organism will cease all activities they were previously doing and begin to walk. The direction the infected will walk is towards the host whose spores have been inhaled by the infected individual. Oh no. If the infected makes their way to the host, they will kneel down in front of it, expose their vital organs, and the host will promptly gut and remove those organs. The host will consume them and discard the leftover scraps. However, if an infected organism doesn't reach the host within a 36 hour span or is treated for their infection, the effects will wear off and return back to normal. Okay. Noted. If a host is unable to find prey or doesn't like its current location, it will unroot itself and move to a new location. Their scarce numbers and the hazard of being around one, makes getting info about the host very daunting. All you need to currently know is that the host is extremely dangerous, and should be avoided at all costs. Next, the monoliths. What the fuck? Oh my god, I'm loving how they're getting worse and worse. Alright, what do we have here? Did I pass it? 
I think it was after. Did I miss a lot of it? Kind of. We're, we're getting towards the middle, but there's still a lot left, so I think it'll be easy to catch up. Just a red, a red dot. Ah. Although one day, the critters found the cave while searching for food. They found the prince entranced in his healing sleep. The critters were in awe, were so awestruck and enhanced. Fuck me. Enchanted by the prince's magic. Yeah, we watched the Mandela catalog already. You gotta watch the full documentary for the extra details. I went straight to his channel and went to playlists and put this playlist. So is I, I would assume that this playlist has all of it. You guys you you guys have said it like ten times. So is is this correct? Okay. Wait, did you guys see that? Am I... Discretion is advice. Okay. The monoliths. The monolith is a very new creature, only showing up in June of 1972, in the area of... <laughs> there are only seven monoliths, uh -huh. all of them located in a circular position, one and a half kilometers in diameter. This ring of monoliths surround uh. The monolith is a titanic sized being, measuring roughly 120 meters in height. Each monolith has two trunk legs that are firmly embedded underground. The legs connect to a torso. The creature itself is made of hundreds of thousands of meaty strands, tightly woven together to form the structure. These strands end at the neck. Fusing into a solid mass of hardened flesh in the shape of an upside down triangle with a hole in its center. What On each the side fuck? of the monolith where arms would be, there are dozens of long, rope like appendages. These reach just barely to the ground. At the creature's feet, the strands go deep into the earth and extend horizontally a decent distance away. What the monoliths do is simply stand and do nothing. The only activity documented that the monoliths have done was in During this period, they were extremely aggressive. When the group of were making their way to the city, oh my the God. monolith that they had passes roared a deep bellow and the swung its appendages at the team, completely wiping them out. When military vehicles were dispatched, once they got close enough top the monolith, it roared another call. Okay, keep your secrets. An EMP blast, completely knocking the vehicles out in the vicinity. Finally, long distance rockets were fired and struck the creature. It regenerated at great speed and resumed its. Wait, let's see if we can catch a little bit more of that. Damn, that crazy. That's so fucking cool the way this is done. Although damaged, it regenerated at great speed and resumed its stance unscathed. Eventually, the area has been fenced off and is now restricted to all. Ever since, the monoliths stand silently, now only a grand spectacle of awe and mystery, only adding more questions to these meat beings. And finally, the last creature on this list is... I cannot, I can't, I do not know what that says. Not even a little bit. We see more creatures. Marvelous and majestic world that exists today. It's as extraordinary to have such strange and mysterious beings appear all around us. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery Wait. around us today. What? And finally, 
The last creature on this list is... Marvelous and majestic world that exists today. It's as extraordinary to have such strange and mysterious beings appear all around us. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery of the lives of these living meat creatures. So Lord Fart King of the Turdmen. <laughs> Welcome to the community. I saw that earlier. <laughs> Welcome. I, I, I like your name. Oh, this is 32 minutes. Wait, what? Or is this everything we just watched? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, wait, hold on. There's, let me see if there's anything that we missed. I, think I can already see a few things here. Wait, what is this? Oh, we watched this, right? sounds to either lure or startle prey into cornering themselves. Once a human is in place, it will swiftly attack and kill the helpless target. Sorry. Sorry, chat. I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Aw, that's mean. Thanks, Bree. Okay, what's this? A singularity. of a dark colored mineral with hints of luminous colors within its core. The singularity is estimated to be one meter in diameter. The orb has several unique qualities that are not well understood. The singularity typically can be found suspended in air by an unseen force. There are also a variety of reading that have been documented coming from the orb itself. Various things like magnetic fields, energy signatures, and other pattern-like signals released by the singularity. The population of these creatures is unknown. Almost all info about the singularity is hidden or confiscated by officials. We were only able to receive one classified document about the singularity being held by... and majestic world that exists today. It's as extraordinary to have such strange and mysterious beings appear all around us. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery of the lives of these living meat creatures. Okay, so then we're on to the next ones in the, uh, in the playlist. This could be the greatest discovery of the age. Baby. Don't let this feeling end. Have any information of the whereabouts of We may be making a dish that has recently gained a fair amount of popularity. Today's dish will be a cheesy called carne. Okay. I know I've never heard of Sun is Gone. These will be the ingredients you will need. Okay, here we go. Cups of penne pasta. Roughly three cups worth of fresh crawl. Try to get a variety oh, of ew. sizes when you buy yours or when you harvest them yourself. One cup of cheese. Half a cup of green onion. One teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of Cajun spice. Two tablespoons of parsley. One tablespoon of dill. One tablespoon of garlic. A pinch of pepper. And finally, the most crucial ingredient. Nutrier Company's newly released flavor enhancer. To bring out the richness of flavors within each and every meal. First, get a medium-sized pot and fill half of it with water. Is this him? Add a pitch of salt, which is used to help the pot come to a boil faster and help flavor the pasta. Then, set aside to boil. 
Grab your crawl and a sharp knife. Begin to cut the meat into a rough mince. I gotta know how he fucking made this. I, this looks fucking absolutely disgusting. I fucking hate this. I fucking hate it. Oh my god. That's fucking gr- Seymour, aren't you fucking streaming? What's happening over there? Hi, Gmart. Hi! Oh, bye. Bye, Gmart. Listen, it's just meat. Crawl is Bro, I <laughs> can we talk about this for a second? First of all, I don't know why Gmar is even friends with me. Every time Gmart comes into my stream, I'm doing something ridiculous that just does not does not does not match his vibes. I don't know how we're still friends, so thank you. Second of all, we, dude, up until this point, Gmar, I swear to God, it has been tame and interesting and and, and, and magnificent and creepy. I, I dude, fucking Darian has spent such a good this is this is so this sounds and the fact that you have to know, understand this is purposefully seems or i'm assuming purposefully quiet like i've had to put it all the way at 100 like it it's it's full volume but the the how much time he is spending on cutting this and how disgusting it's sounding like i i and it, I don't even know how he made this. I don't know how he made this, but it's fucking gross. Darren, we gotta talk about your knife cutting skills. We gotta we gotta talk about your skills here. Loud ad? Wait, can I oh I can't snooze the ads. I'm sorry. Okay, well it looks like hey Juzo, what's up, man? We are uh we're gonna hang out while we how about I put this on, like, full fucking slow motion here? Is it two? What what makes it slower or faster? Point two? Alright, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. <laughs> uh, God, I gotta fucking fix the ads next month. Jesus. I just joined. What am I looking at? Well, uh, meat. It's called crawl. Um, you know, it's um. Crawl is soft on the outside. <laughs> Thank you, laughing man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Are we, are we almost done with the ads? Oh, you poor beans. I'm so sorry, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for gifting those subs. Let it play. You like it. Okay. I'll put it. Here it has a surprising sturdiness. I, I want to ask him so bad how he did this. But maybe he doesn't want to talk. Maybe he doesn't want to reveal his secrets. Kratos yells boy. I love your name. Welcome to the community. This looks fucking vile. He didn't even cut that one. Mince the green onion interrupts. Why are you cutting it? This is so unsanitary. You're cutting raw crawl with your oh. Segments. <laughs> Take this mince and set aside as well. Next, grab your skillet and preheat with a long some oil. God. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Take your minced crawl and spread it evenly across the skillet. Stir occasionally until crisp and brown. I'm literally not looking. As Ugh. your water reaches a boil, add your penne and stir occasionally. Cook until soft. At this time, your crawl will be brown and crisp. Okay, that doesn't look so bad. Add your minced green onion and then the spices. Mix well. Yeah, that looks dry as fuck. Once your pasta is finished cooking, strain it. <laughs> Gary would have burned it by now. Oh god. Lay you cooked penne evenly into your dish. Wait, did we did we see a did we see a face? One second. Lay you cooked penne evenly into your dish. Ah, uh, damn. Why is he wearing a mask? Then add the crawl topping. Uh. Uh. Sprinkle a generous amount of cheese along the still warm crawl for it to melt. At this point, finish preparing the dish with your flavor enhancer, but allow your dish to cool to a temperature below 60 degrees Celsius, or else the enhancer will not work. I'm convinced this and man doesn't know how to cook. They serve and enjoy. Also, Ruby Rose, welcome back for 24 months. Happy two years anniversary. Nice to see you again. Wait. Wait. Let me cook. Let me cook. Okay. I can't, I don't know what that says. Many people get pets for companionship. They form bonds and grow relationships with these animals, even to the Mithra. point of being considered a part of the family. Welcome on in. Thank you so much for the lovely Most raid. I appreciate that. But maybe you want something more interesting. Oh no. Then, you may want to get yourself a trimming. These lumps of meat have grown a reputation to be a loving companion for many people in the recent months. Although, most people may not know the proper ways to care for them. Today, we will be showing you how you can care for your pet trimming. Taking care of a trimming is fairly easy, but this is no reason to slack off. They are living things and do require maintenance. 
The first thing to keep in mind when keeping a trimming is the temperature of your home. While trimmings are resilient to both high and low conditions, you want to keep your base temperature near room temp, maybe slightly cooler. That being said, trimmings prefer oh warmer areas to nest. A simple setup you may use is a box with some blankets on the inside. Okay. Make sure there is enough for your trimming to cover itself. And now, you have oh. a comfy bed for your buddy. Next, you want to give your trimming the best diet possible. Trimmings are not picky eaters and will eat anything you give them. Angelica. <laughs> healthy and strong, a diet of dry cat or dog food that is high in protein, provided two times a day, is best. As a treat, you may give your trimming any scraps of your food. Things like apple cores, banana peels, or eggshells are a perfect snack. A thing to remember is trimmings are nocturnal and make plenty of noise. To prevent you from having sleepless nights, try to give your trimmings first meal in the late morning or afternoon. This helps them be active during these times instead. Another thing to consider if you want a pet trimming is where they will be living. Your home should have enough space for your trimming to roam around, as well as access to the outdoors, like a backyard. If not, be sure to take your trimmings on regular walks. This gives your trimming the exercise they need, as well as allowing them to meet other trimmings. Trimmings are a social creature and need to interact with others of their kind, like how they do in the wild. Hi blind, welcome on in. When it this comes is incredible. To entertainment, trimmings are not the most active and aren't the best at fetch or tug of war. Bye. But here are other ways to keep your trimming entertained. Some toys that trimmings like are little items they can push, around, pull, or carry. Trimmings also enjoy things that you enjoy as well. Like watching the television or listening to the radio. They love seeing and listening to all the funny things coming from the devices. After a long day, your trimming might be dirty and need a wash. To clean them, start your bath with a gentle warm water mixed with a bit of hand or body wash. Gently scrub the trimming's feet, armpits, belly, and neck folds. Ugh. Remember to be careful around their face and avoid getting soap in their eyes, nose, and mouth. Gently pat dry with a towel when done. Now your buddy is all clean. Ugh. And lastly, as said before, trimmings are social creatures, so be sure to give them plenty of affection. They love receiving pats, scratches, and pets. They also love to sit with you and cuddle. Since they communicate with each other in the wild, it is best to replicate this behavior with them as well. Okay. Simply talking to them is plenty enough. Okay. You can talk about your day, if anything interesting happened at work, if you are working on any new recipes, okay. or talk about the weather. Trimmings are very good listeners, and love to be involved. Sounds like a pretty good pet, honestly. Other than how it generally looks. With all of these in mind, you are now well equipped to have a trimming become a part of the family. Do things right, and you will have a companion for a long while. Is it poop? That is a great question. I have no idea. One day, the prince awoke suddenly. Thanks to the critter's assistance, the healing process had finished very quickly. The prince had fully recovered and was now fully awake and aware of their surroundings. Surprised by the sudden awakening, the critters ducked and hid from the
Prince's sight. In the year of 1945, with the war finally ended, the cleanup process had started. During routine sweeping oh my God. on train tunnel, the cleanup crew made a grotesque discovery. Found completely filling the tunnel was a meaty wall and in the center of the mass was an mm. opening with several skulls surrounding it. Closer inspection of the blockage revealed that the mass was actually an extremely engorged meat snake. Its impeccable size had blocked off the entirety of the tunnel's path. There was many strange things with this creature. First was the coloration. A typical meat snake's color is bright reds and light browns. This particular meat snake was a very deep maroon. Another strange thing about it was its behavior. This creature barely moved. Meat snakes are normally sluggish and encumbersome, but the specimen discovered seemed to lack even basic motor functions. Its behavior was that of a plant's. Stationary, with only minor movements within. One would assume it was dead. The reason the meat snake may act this way may be because it was completely lodged in place and minimized movements to conserve energy. But how would it have gotten this deep into the tunnel in the first place? And by the looks of weathering, it had been in there for quite some time. So how did it get so large? Is it dead? Or the just... answer was discovered by a different cleaning crew who found the other end of the tunnel. They followed it until it met with the other end of the meat snake. Alongside it was a huge pile of car- <laughs> This meat snake's skin also displayed great amounts of resilience. Excuse me? It took several days of cutting to what? even obtain a sample. What? Here, you can see the clear difference between this meat snake specimen versus a normal meat snake's membrane. Testing on the sample showed that it had great immunity to damage. It tolerated extreme freezing temperatures, extreme heat temperatures, and even high doses of radiation. It is a Welcome wonder back, how Thank such you durability so much. can occur in an organic creature. Another strange phenomenon. I've, ho I've heard your voice somewhere before. Are you a voice actress? No, but I hope to be one day. Phenomenon is the smell off the skin. Normally, it would have a sour smell of rotting flesh. But the specimen displayed a rather pleasant smell, like that of cooking scrambled eggs. What? The meat snake was later discovered to be missing by unknown survivors. How the meat snake grew in size was discovered to be. What? Egg snake? One of the critters built up the courage to meet the now awake stranger. They crawled to the prince's side and extended the hand in friendship. The prince reached back and together they had formed the bond that would change their fate. So welcome on in, anyone that is coming in, stopping by, leaving, going, coming. Wait, it skipped it. Mimic defense instructional tape. It's 21 minutes long. It won't let me play it. Looks like I've even played it as well. Okay, hang on. Hmm. Got it.
time of this video's release. We have been facing a concerning increase of missing persons and fatalities on a global scale. The reason for this is because we are under attack. We have discovered that there has been a significant growth of mimic populations, which is threatening public safety. National leaders have released this instructional recording to teach you on how to defend yourself. Here is what you need to know about the threat. Mimics are humanoid, intelligent predators that are highly adaptive and feed solely on human prey. Mimics gain information on people by watching their daily lives and pick to hunt people when they are most vulnerable. The most common times a mimic will attack is when you are asleep, that walking alone, or in a cornered position. Mimics are cautious and calculative creatures, taking precautions to ensure a successful hunt. They utilize various tactics to capture a person by surprise. One of the more well-known tactics is hiding itself inside of furniture. Oh to God! To its environment. Common objects that mimics can hide inside. Oh my God! Us recliners, wardrobes, ottomans, and other places a mimic can comfortably wait. Mimics are able to contort their body in ways that allow them to fit inside smaller places. They also use it to expand their body, making themselves appear larger for intimidation. Another method mimics use to blend in is their ability to put on and wear clothing. Mimics put on layers of shirts pants, and jackets to hide their bright red skin and blend into densely populated areas. In very rare cases, mimics can develop and grow to look very similar to human beings. Pairing this with clothing, it can be very hard to tell the difference. How many people are that? A lot of people have had to again. All right, well, in the meantime, if you guys want to take a potty break, go tinkle, get a stretch, you know, go in. Any of the above. Uh, five ads. <sighs> I honestly don't know. I don't know. But all I know is that I'm happy to pause while everyone takes a quick intermission. How are you guys liking this? Right now, we're this is about a 20-minute video. Um, and we're we're past... This is this is like we're at the end now. So what's what's your general consensus, chat? Really good. Solid 10. Very interesting, cool stuff. Extremely enthralled, enjoyable, interesting. I'm vibing. It's nice. Enjoying it. Loving it. Chilling. I love seeing first time chatters say something. It proves my shitty day. I'm glad. I don't know how to deep dive into mystery flesh pit, to be honest with you. Good as hell. <laughs> yeah, there's heaps of attention to detail. I think something makes it more enjoyable and memorable when there are practical effects. This is a sticker. Hang on. I'm just a baby. Oh my god. I gotta get this. I gotta get it. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you really good at reading? Hey, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. All right, we back. We ready? All right. No, that, that supports the creator. Difference between a mimic and a person right away. If you are unsure if a person is a mimic, look out for key features that may reveal their true form. Look for abnormal facial features, like large, bulbous eyes, flat noses, wide mouths in an uncanny smile, and clammy skin. Also pay attention to other exposed body parts like hands. Mimic people will have long fingers with no fingernails. If you are unable to see their face or hands, watch their walking pattern. Mimic's legs are long and hunched. Their walking will be unusual and irregular. 
here is what you do if you are met with a medic. If it stands before you, do not panic. I haven't seen Needle Mouse. Stand your ground and try to appear larger. Or this Wave your hands and make plenty of voice. Now. Maintain eye contact. A mimic will hesitate to attack a potential threat. If you are armed with the weapon, aim for the head or legs. These are the best areas to hit to immobilize the threat. Fight back and don't let it get a hold on you. If you find a mimic that hasn't discovered you yet, stay out of sight. Call the authorities and alert them of your location. Stay where you are to avoid startling the mimic. If the mimic gives chase, run. Try to get somewhere out of sight and hide. Do not leave the area. Officials will need to locate you to help. Stay low and stay quiet. With the information you have learned, use it well and stay safe. Evidence tape, Christopher and Janice case, 1983. Got it. Yep, it's working. Hey, can you get a move on? Uh, one sec. Yeah. I know, but it's gotta see how it works. Like, yeah, well, I never got to use one of these. Nice. <laughs> well, too, too bad. You were the only person who could film with me, so you're gonna have to put up with it. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Screw you. Screw you. Screw you. It's still way too dark. One sec. There we go. Hello. There we go. We got, we got some light now. But look at that over there. You can't see anything unless I like point directly over there. Like, nope, can't see nothing. Are you sure we should be out this late? Fine. I'll cook you stuff when we get home. Don't worry. I'm hungry. Too bad. Where are they going? No, 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 no. No, why? In this day, in this this time period, why why would you go in the woods? Hopefully there are lights out there. Like, people still live there, right? Can't be that bad. Pretty dark to me. But, it was just one guy. I, I don't know why. Like, why would they get rid of everything? Dogs 
barking are never a good sign. No. Hi, Lizzie. Oh, Welcome back. Nice. How are you doing, man? I Hi. Capture it. Could barely capture the ground in front of me. Supposedly, they found some guy, like, it was like, it was like a grody scene, like, it was disgusting. Like, they, like, they had to get rid of the trailer he was in, and then, like, they didn't let anyone nearby, and it was like this big conspiracy. What's up, Campbell Peak? So, you know, I'm filming that. So, you're gonna go where there was a Hopefully big situation. Oh, okay. You're in your closet? Oh my god. Some crazy conspiracy shit went down. It was a horrible scene, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna go film it. Dialogue. Okay, almost there. It'll be, it'll, it'll be like real good. Hey, Snow, welcome back for 23 minutes. Yeah, this is this part's a, a bit too long for, for my liking. I, I was there, and then... Wait, you see it? I didn't see anything. Did you see it? Yeah, the tension was building, and now I'm just like, okay, where's it going? Look at this. I didn't see this on my way over here last time. It's cool. Like, we, we could get a shot of this in, like, atmosphere, you know? It just looks like tetanus to me. Uh, hold on. One sec, let me get a good lighting on that. There we go. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Hey, look, there's, like, old stuff here as well. Okay. Slowly. Slowly, maybe there will be something. Hello, I'm new here. Hi, welcome to the community. Yeah, we're close. The trailer should be right up ahead. You said that 30 minutes ago. Almost. Gently now. 
This is where everyone was. There's no one here now, though. Not a single building in sight. Except, like, way over there. But... There's no one here. The strangest thing. So what is this all a part of? It's called Vita Carnis, and we kind of watched a few videos breaking down what this new species in the ecosystem is. And they're essentially like meat, just, just lumps of meat in various ways and how they live in our ecosystem. Um, and now this is, this is like a found footage of someone finding or interacting with one of them, but it's taking a bit to get there. Okay, we're there. Right we're there. We're there. We're there. Yeah. This thing. Okay. So you you take the camera and the light. Uh, point at me, but don't point at my eyes, please. Um. Like a bark bag. What's what's gonna happen? All right, give me a second. And dissipation. Confidential. His father that he came home to was found dead. Grizzly seen like before him, police were called and came to investigate strange thing, so they immediately closed off everything. No one was allowed near. Only a few witnesses saw what really happened there. For some reason, the police were acting very weird, trying to keep everyone away and telling little information. And when the information was released to the public, there, were, there was a suicide. Although Trailer and most people living nearby moved away pretty much immediately. Oh. Police say it was a suicide, but the witnesses that did catch an eye of what happened, they've seen was much too grisly to do that. But police haven't come out about anything yet. That's why I'm here what actually happened and that's it for now yeah i was gonna say that too you said grizzly like five times I don't think anything's gonna happen. Also, welcome on the new chatters. Nice to see you. Welcome, okay. welcome. You guys don't know what we're watching. We're watching a little bit of Vita Carnus. Yeah. Cut it out. Fair enough as is. Games you can. Wait a second. Mr. Zeke says, I've been lurking since Warhammer 3 time frame with uh, Strippin and friends. This blew my mind and got me to chat. I love stuff like this. Can we all say hello to Mr. Zeke? Bro, welcome on in. I can't believe you've been lurking for that long and you're like, you know what? This is fucking cool. This is Brad. I'm a chat. I love this. Welcome on into the community, man. Thank you so much for being such a long time lurker. Uh, 
of the channel and and all the important boys much appreciated and uh we're happy that you finally you finally wanted to talk and we found something that tickled your fancy and laughing man thank you welcome on in welcome <laughs> That's up to Laughing Man, always uh, welcoming people. I discovered you with the most recent Gmart stream? That's so badass. Gmart's a homie. Welcome back, Max. Thank you. What's up, Dudley? Applause? Oh, no, didn't like that. Didn't like that. Classic Chris. Go back, wait, 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 go back, go back, go back. Hold on. I missed a, uh, uh. Oh, do you see Dawn? Hi, Tui. There was a moment. Oh, yeah, okay, she's running inside. Oh, sh is she being pulled? Looks like she's being pulled. She's inside. But the thing is, it said it doesn't give chase. Oh, she fell. Take another peek at that. That's great. That's fucking great. There's a face in the middle of the screen. Wait, what do you mean? It doesn't give chase if the prey has a clear escape route. Okay, okay. Did it just tase her? Oh, no, it didn't. It looks like it is. Do you see that? What the fuck is... What is that? What is that? Jesus. All right, let's get this last one here. We're we're nearing our end. 
or the end. God, I love this. Come on. I'm having a hard time getting this last one. I think it says it's so close to the end. There we go. The critters led the prince out of the cave, up to the top of the hill. The prince had laid buried under and showed them the forest. This is our home, full of wonder and beauty. Although the forest struggles to provide for us critters, for us critters, and we are facing disaster, can you help us? Okay, so the... What is all this? Children of the House was so good. Ugh. The Long Guide Project. Oh, God. There's so much stuff to, to, to catch up on. The next part's kind of fucked. Oh, hell yeah. Flavor. The most crucial component to enjoying a good meal. Chaka, I'm glad to hear that. The way food tastes is what makes eating so pleasurable. But what if you could savor every little detail you could possibly want? That is why we at New Dryer Co. have made it so that you may enjoy every single bite you take. With our product, the Flavor Enhancer, you can extract every last morsel of taste from your plate. With overwhelming demand for this essential product, even since our start earlier this year, we have delivered what you wanted. Now introducing the Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Now packaged in a larger size so and for the gifted recipe, sub. there is now even more savory goodness to go around. Since our debut in mid-1990, the Flavor Enhancer has shown to be a major hit, with our product flying off the shelves. Jeez, the draft. The Welcome to the community. Will allow us Thank to you. Satisfy your growing, tasting needs. Now allowing you to add even more enhancer to your dinner, making your food even better to enjoy. It looks so grotesque. The flavor enhancer deluxe available on shelves now. New Trier Co. Experience true savor. I think that video that that you're right. That symbol was on the host video. I skipped one? I did skip one. Sorry, guys. Harness species log number 14. Abnormality documentation harvester. Notable population density shift discovered between the dates of 1989, 08, 01, 1989, 10, 01. Maps display the charted populations of harvesters' location on a monthly basis. August 1st.
What the fuck? I'm trying to lower the volume so I don't hurt your guys' ears. If you want the loud obnoxiousness in your ears, by all means, I won't lower it. Just let me know. October 1st. Looks like this place is just being cut up into pieces. Yeah, just there's a few more seconds of this, so you know, uh, it's almost uh, done. It's cool, but maybe not for everyone, so fair warning. Okay. If we missed a little documentation here. I don't think we did. Oh, we did. I I don't know what that says. Something about subtle brilliance, fights and figures with the power he shall heal their home. Hmm. Can we also pause on the map? Sure. Which part? Hachidan Kotatsu. Welcome back for nine months. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. I don't know. I know, I don't know what that island is. These larger serving sizes make dining even more pleasant, now allowing more generous amounts of enhancer at a time. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe, now available in stores near you. New Trier Co. Experience truth save. Make your taste buds pop with the new deluxe size. Make tasting even more awesome. Blow your kids with this essential part of every meal. New trier truth. Enhancer Deluxe, required for all meals, no matter how small it seems, just a little more. It is crucial to everyday eating. You need the flavor enhancer for joy joy eating. You need the flavor enhancer. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, maybe they are the spores. Uh, I'm using the left and right keys. Hold on. There it is. The prince gathered what he could and then set sail onward. Once the prince returns home, they will come back to the island and return to the critters. Ah, they're talking about an island. Okay. And that's the symbol as well. Hmm.
wonder if the crawl and the creatures that come from it are having something to do with the planet's rising temperature. Oh, I love how, how deep you guys are getting into this. I love it. The island is the base where the monoliths were. Or are, question mark. It seems that way. Confidential info. Files confiscated or not released to the public. Nutri Scandal. Nutri Co. is facing charges after numerous reports of sickness after consumption of the product, the flavor enhancer. Only statements made from the company so far are dismissing any issues that the product is safe to consume. Gifting that sub to flavor enhancer. <laughs> the private organization of containment and research consult association society has been experimenting backlash or experiencing backlash from government agencies about cooperation and violation of newly introduced policies of New log. Message to carcass. All right, you guys are going to have to hold on tight. I need to take out the dogs. One moment. Hold on to your toes. Are we ready? Wait, what? Why, why way too dank? What? I think this is the last one. All right. Before we begin, message. You guys have any last words? I need an intermission. <laughs> Prove you're not a mimic. Hey. I don't think I can. I'm sorry. I've never hid it from you. <laughs> By the way, anyone who is new um, to the chat or to the channel, to the show, 
today any new chatters any new lurkers that i know are there i know you guys are lurking welcome to the community thank you so much for stopping by thank you so much for tuning in and kind of um watching with us i appreciate it everyone who's gifted subs today i really appreciate the support new from the mel collab anyone who's come from fillion or melio and gmart thank you so much curry bro hello new lurker here well it's nice to have you thanks for showing me this i'm hooked i'm glad uh we will be doing unfiction streams once a week so if you're like you know what i don't really like horror games i don't really like some of the games you play um but i really like watching them fiction then you're in luck you know just stop on in for for one of those per week and i got you oh perfect all right well we got ads now so that always makes me happy because for me i know that i don't sit and watch my friend stream from start to finish so the fact that some of you, uh, Debbie's saying, this is one of the first times I've sat and watched for more than a bit. That means a lot. Thank you so much. First actual stream I've watched. Pop in for a second yesterday. Thank you. Thank you so much. That really means a lot. Thank you very, very much. Ads done. All right. We, are we ready? I am just a lurker, and I appreciate you very much. Some still have ads? All right. I don't even know how they're giving you so many ads at once. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're very welcome. Melody is amazing. I don't actively watch, but you guys are a pretty nice background. Thank you. I don't mind at all. I, don't, I, don't, I completely am not offended in the slightest. I, I don't think anyone can sit. Like, streams are anywhere from three to eight hours. I barely sit still for a movie, so I do no harm done. I completely understand. Oh, I was eating a Kit Kat a moment ago, a like mochi Kit Kat. Now I'm eating white cheddar cheese Cheez Its that I brought from the States. Are you guys ready? All right. Hi, Matt. Also, Silver, thank you for saying that. Without further ado, I bring you the finale of Vita Carnes. In the distant horizon, the group of monoliths stand vacant. Although closed off to outsiders, their stance can be observed well outside the perimeter. It is known to have hundreds of thousands of fibers that weave themselves deep underground, all connected in a grand mycelial network. Something has been going on these few years. 
<laughs> the pontiff. Sorry, we're at an end, so you, you guys will be able to get back to work soon. Monoliths are truly an astonishing sight to behold. More to come. Wait a sec. Three weeks ago. Oh, this was three weeks ago. There is not. It's not over. Oh, look in the comments for a write up. Dude, this isn't completed. Damn. Ah, okay. I will gather you guys together whenever uh, he uploads more. Holy shit. Okay, do you guys want me to read this to you? Uh, this commenter says, My theory after marathoning this lovely series so far concerning the print story clippings at least, it almost sounds like the critters are supposed to be just that. Woodland critters. Cr critters. They lived on the small island in the bay and for one reason or another were in the time of famine, most likely caused by humans and their impact on the environment. Somehow and for some reason they stumbled across the prince and gave him food, maybe an animal storing food in the cave meaning to make it a new den and the prince unconsciously consumed some of it. Might mean the prince is similarly non-humanoid, possibly a tendril or ooze based creature for it to be able to consume things unconsciously. Awakening from its own hibernation of sorts, the prince somehow communicated with the animals and decided that the best way to help them was to turn the bane of their existence, humans, into a food source, and as such, selected champions from the critters of the island, or maybe just all of them, to become the first Vita Carnis, and they've spread from there, feasting on primarily humans across all their forms. The crawl serves as a method of reproduction, and increasing plant growth for other animals to eat. The trimmings are their spies. The meat snakes consume carrion because every healthy ecosystem needs something that eats dead stuff, i.g. E fungi and other car scavengers. Mimics are the main consumers and serve as their secret infantry in war against the human race. Harvesters are again consumers and also create safe havens for other animals aside from larger ones like deer or coyotes. But we can assume this is sort of accidental since the crawl they spawn from are basically meat plants with little sentience. The hosts allow for mass long-range infection and killing of humans who somehow evade the mimics and harvesters. And monoliths protect the prince and his family where they now reside on the island in the bay. An eternal thanks for granting the Carnists their power or even to protect them so whatever magic is giving the power to combat and consume the human race cannot be interrupted or stopped. Lots of holes, lots of assumptions being made, and lots of illogical leaps and jumps, but it's fun little headcanon for now. As much as I love these kinds of series and the mystery and hidden lore behind them, I'm not very practiced in trying to decipher it for myself. Okay, buddy. I'm used to Matt Pat and Expo or Windagoon. Um doing that for me but i feel so inspired and drawn to the series that i just had to give it a shot not bad for giving my five extremely smooth brain cells half an hour to put together something resembling a theory that's just a theory he says darian i want to tell you this is by far the best youtube horror series i've seen and you've done an amazing job yeah this is um this is great and the fact that it's not even finished is fantastic so far, I give it a solid, like, 9 out of 10. I really, really enjoy this. Yeah, I wonder why Canada... Maybe maybe that's where he lives, and he was like, I'm going to make it where my home is. Yes, I've seen Gemini Home Entertainment. I and I'm so happy to see how many new faces there are around here that enjoyed this. 
That was very... So I get a, a, a grizzly out of 10. For sure. I wonder, maybe I can wait until he posts more and then we'll have a day where there's like, we wait maybe a month or two or three. I don't know how much time is in between all of these, but we can, we can watch this uh, at another time. There seems to be more um, things that I haven't seen, but we're not done because um, we have talked in the Discord server about what is coming up next. So if you guys want to know, join the Discord server, exclamation point Discord. We do have a section here called Unfiction. That's where you can drop uh, anything you want me to take a look at. And every week I will look over them and see what we, will be the best Unfiction to deep dive into the following week. Our next options are going to be either... Um, da -da 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 -da. There's one of Garfield and one of... Okay, there's this one that's coming up next, and this one. Where's the Garfield one? I don't know where the Garfield one is. Hold on, let me see. I think I put it in announcements. This one. Okay. So here are what you can expect for next week. We'll do a vote in the Discord. Um, there's like a whole unfiction series here in ARG involving Garfield. This might be a two-parter, uns unsure, depends on how long all of these are. Uh, but um, not my dad's tapes. Are those bad? I don't know. No idea. Um, but this one, the one I'm looking forward to the absolute most is called Fake Documentary Q. Now, the only thing with this one is that it is, uh, it is in Japanese, so there are subtitles, and I don't know um, kind of what to do about that. I, I, I don't mind reading at all, and I think this one is a lot, is extremely paranormal, and I'm really, really excited for it. Um, like, here's a little taste. So I, I think this one's going to be a really good one, honestly. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know if you want me to, like, read over someone speaking in Japanese. But this is, this is a good one. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to save Fake, you don fake Documentary Q for a weekend evening. Uh, but I don't think I can promise that anytime soon because I have Resident Evil sponsorship coming up. Um, and I want to play that throughout the weekend so but yeah can you please give me some feedback what what do you guys want to do with something that is in another language that you have to read how many of you guys here were watching and just listening versus people who are actually in tuned and reading because i think that will really cut the audience in half if you have to read Dang, I no Zoingo, I've never heard of that. You was you were actively watching, listening. Okay, okay. Okay, well it seems it seems like that the consensus is that um mostly people don't mind. Okay, so what I'll do whenever we go over fake documentary Q is that I'll probably talk about it after each video and go over what happened for those that are listening. And then for those that are actively watching, there will be subtitles. So that sounds, uh, sounds like a good idea. But I don't, I don't know. This one seems like extremely goofy and just insanity. So maybe this is something we'll do on a weekday, but... There's a, a whole list of unfixed deep dives that we are waiting to do together, and I really look forward to it. I think deep dives are one of my favorite things to do. It just has taken me a while to get around to it because of all the games to play and sponsors we've had. So on the channel, you can kind of look forward to more of those. Um, finding stories to read. I'd like to find an actual horror novel that I'm allowed to read on the stream. 
uh, and Sons of Forest Resident Evil. So that's that's what you guys can kind of um, look forward to. Let me. I'm so bright. That's fine. But yeah, well, did you guys have a good time today? I would read normally. I just happen to have freaking viral infection. Oh no, 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 you're good, man. I'm new to chatting. I just want to say I've been enjoying the stream immensely. Oh, dude, Snow King, thank you so much. I'm glad to see how how good of a time you guys had. Well, we can give a warm uh, round of applause for Darian. I really, really enjoyed uh, that unfiction. I had a really good time. Maybe at some point we can... Um, maybe someone like Nightmind uh, has gone over it. And we can watch a little synopsis of it. Yeah. First impression of this stream was really nice. Well, thanks. Also, Jay, thank you so much uh, for joining the community. I appreciate it and welcome on in. Yeah, be sure to, if you'd like to join the Discord, I'll let you know uh, what kind of unfictions we'll be doing next. And you get a chance to vote on what you'd like to see. There's something new to me. I just followed after the stream with Fillion. Dude, thank you so much. First impression was excellent. Oh my god, thank you. You guys are very, very kind today. I do appreciate it so, so, so much. Uh, let's see where I can take you guys next. Uh, I'm going to throw you guys over. Because we did Unfiction today, I know we already raided uh, Nick. I missed most of it because I wasn't home, but I enjoyed the end of it. Thanks, Lena. Thank you. Um, Grumpy little dude, thank you so much for the gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you. Genuinely. I followed the stream with Philly yesterday. New type of stream for me. A lot different from yesterday, but very fucking cool. Thank you. I, uh, I genuinely enjoy the creepy parts of the internet and some fucked up shit and holding your hand through it all so that you don't have to be alone watching it. That's what I'm here for. I'm your support horror mother. So Grimwood, thank you so much. Welcome to the community. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you guys over to Nick Nocturne. If you don't know, he is Nightmind. He's just uh just um started streaming recently. He's usually the guy that has a very very thorough breakdown of unfictions, ARGs, and creepy things on the internet. And he's a wonderful wonderful creator. I know that we rated him before, but this is Unfiction Day, so might as well spread the love to very similar creators. Go give him a follow. Check him out. And um, yeah, I. I will probably be streaming tomorrow. What am I streaming? I don't know. I'm not sure. Why don't you follow my Twitter and Discord and we'll kind of have a chat about it, yeah? But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for the lovely time. I love how immersed you guys are when we have um, when we have Unfiction Deep Dives. It feels like all of us, like the vibe I get is that all of us are sitting in a, in like a theater or a living room and all of us are like oh did you see that and we're like writing it down and we're like kind of comparing notes and stuff but yeah yeah did you eat your flavor enhancer yet today that's a that's a good that's a good raid message did you eat your flavor enhancer yet today yeah of course ghost in the shell all right i will see you guys most likely tomorrow Take it easy, relax, and remember, you see a mimic, run, night kite.